The final positions are up for grabs here in the Mixed Pairs event at the World Bowls Indoor Championships in 2023 here at the Warilla Bowls Club. Really looking forward to this one. We've got Scotland against Guernsey. Val Febo here with you and joining me as she has done all day. Alan Faulkner, how are you? I'm very good, thank you, Val, and looking forward to this next game. Certainly, Julie uh, Julie Forrest and Mark Stepney against Alison Merrion and Ian Merrion, the husband-wife combination. This is going to be a very, very interesting contest, both of them from the Northern Hemisphere, both very, very capable on these indoor greens. I'm really not sure where this one is heading. I think it's going to be a very interesting encounter. Um, they'll all know each other really well. Um, certainly, Ali and Julie have gone head-to-head -head many a time over the years. Um, particularly in singles, maybe not as much um, in a mixed pairs combination, um, but they certainly know each other's well and each other's game plans. Um, and Michael and Ian, they certainly won't be strangers, you know, both um, very um, decorated players on the British Isles circuit. Oh, they certainly are, and it's uh, going to be as we um, just let uh, Julie have her bowl here on the mat next to us and doing their roll-up. Yeah, they're both very, very evenly poised. And if you look at the um, the mixed pairs results from last year, the defending champions uh, for Alison is one of those. And then Julie and, Ma and Michael, sorry, both uh, the singles champions from last time out. So three of the four bowlers on the green here actually won in Bristol last year. So this one is poised to be a cracking contest. And after the match that we got in the men's singles quarterfinal with Aaron Sheriff and a last, uh, last bowl winner... Hopefully we get more of the same here. I would certainly think so. And, uh, of course, now we did have a few issues, so we do apologise for those in the previous session. We are streaming at the moment. We're uh, Facebook Live, World Bowls Facebook, as a fail-safe. You can head to the Bowls Australia YouTube channel. So fingers crossed uh, Fingers crossed. the spammers don't, uh, don't interrupt us this time, but if they do, fail-safe Bowls Australia YouTube channel but we should be okay here. So the skips will come down and fire their bowls away. Three bowl pairs. Three bowl pairs, and it's a respot on the tee. And because we're now in knockout stages, um, we're going to seven ends. So in the sectional play, it was only the five ends. Certainly. And one end tie break to decide things here. The skips make their way down to fire these. Australia and England, the old rivals, they have commenced their contest. It's Aaron Sheriff and Kelsey Cottrell against Kirsty Hembro and Martin Puckett. We'll bring you updates to how that match is going throughout the evening. The artificial light has started to take over. The spectators next to us are having some pizza and I can smell it. Smells lovely. Made me realise that I actually haven't eaten anything all day. <laughs> so I've had two coffees, but certainly not enough because that smell is really making me hungry. Yeah, that's not good, Val. That's not good. So anyone in the local area of Rurilla Bowls Club, um, please come down and uh, watch the action live. Um, we've got some of the world's best bowlers here. Um, great display of bowls so far. There's been some really, really um, mouth-watering games over the last day. And uh, indeed, it started in on Sunday. The days are going so quickly. They did. Started May 7 and all the way up to, what, May 11 now and one more day to come. But yeah, it feels like an eternity ago that the mixed pairs was... Uh, was at the forefront of everybody's mind in terms of having just all of the sectional play on one day. Yep, and uh, we went from 8.30 in the morning to I think it was 11.20 at night. That is a long day. It certainly is. BPL type days, those. So just a couple more now for the skips to send down. And then well, one more. Ian Marion has sent it down and We'll get this one underway. So to start with, it'll be Alison Marion 
with the mat. Former winner of this event in the singles in 2008 and also 2012. Both of them here, so she knows how to bowl at the Warilla Bowls and Recreational Club. Yeah, I was talking to Ali, her and Ian actually spent a little bit of time over here. They've had some extended periods where they've enjoyed the Aussie Greens and, and playing over here for a few months at a time. Certainly. Good to see a husband-wife combination out there as well. It's definitely uh, unusual. Could you play with Chris? So we, we have and we do, um, but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess with your CV, you've got uh, you've got the rite of passage. I guess you can just say, "Well, no, look at what I've done. I'm right." Oh, I definitely never pull um, mm. pull that card. <laughs> yeah, but we seem to uh, get on a little bit better um, when we switched over. So when we first started playing together, a few well, quite quite a few years ago, a long time ago actually, um, Chris skipped. I went up front, um, but more recently we switched over and seem to uh, have gone a little bit better. Fair enough. So Alison sending in her second here. Yeah, good line again, just pulling up, but a good opening bowl from Ali. Julie, not wasted there. She's got the tee covered. Um, she'll just be looking to adjust with this next bowl. So for those that missed this before. The men's single semi-finals are also set. Aaron Sheriff against Martin Puckett. They're actually skipping against each other right now, uh, the Aussie and the Englishman. And then we've also got Andrew Kelly against Michael Stepney. So Andrew Kelly got over the top of Izzat Zulkeple of Malaysia in an epic tiebreak. Zulkeple nudged the jack with the final bowl, almost had it. Jack went a little bit too far and New Zealand progressed. Ali following up this last bowl. So the blue paddles for Scotland, green for Guernsey. Gary, the commentators, myself, Val Febo, and Alan Faulkner joining you for this contest. Great to have your company. Great company of everybody around the world where you are watching. Scotland looking good so far. Julie winning the battle of the leads. Yeah, she'll be pleased with that. First end, two in the head and one behind. Can't ask for much more than that. Michael will be very happy with that. result there. Yep. His weight was good. Ian, a uh, bronze medalist in 2007 at the Al Atlantic Bowls Championships. He's also represented Guernsey at the Commonwealth Games back in 2002, 2006 and 2014. Very experienced at international level, Ellen. He is indeed. Michael's trying. It's gone through, fallen out though. One up, as indicated by Julie. Yeah, good, good effort there from him. The important thing from a Scottish perspective is they've actually got three seconds now. So Michael's got an opportunity to actually make a few here, but Ian's obviously got a 
couple of bowls to come to, so he'll be looking to get this one in the head to deny Michael that opportunity. Terry Morrison joining in. Good on you, Terry. He's a big fan and his daughter Chloe performed sensationally well. She certainly did and Terry was there supporting all the way through. He supported all the emerging and pathways jackaroos and the jackaroos as well. Certainly and Fiona asking will the final be streamed after this game? The final is tomorrow. All of those matches will be streamed. We'll have a single semi-final for you next. We're not 100% sure on those details as of yet. We will have them soon for you. Hello to you, Lucas. And David, yeah, they are aware, but uh, some of them might not be as used to being live streamed as, as others, so... Standing in the way a little bit, we can ask the marker if they can move at some stage. Yeah, and it's just what mm. you um, tend to do. You can't help but being drawn into the head. Yep. So a chance here for Scotland. Certainly. Holding one at the present. You look at Julie Forrest's international CV, Ellen. Um, it's one that many, many would envy. Bronze medalist at the, or oh sorry, silver medalist at the World Championships. A couple of bronze medals in the Taylor Trophy. Silver at World Cup singles, what this event used to be called. Gold medalist here. And she's also won the World Bowls Tour. Yes. Ladies match play. So no stranger to success. Nope. Won two of those in singles and one in mixed pairs. This one's travelling. Not far away as indicated by Julie, but there's one to Scotland to kick things off in this evening session. So good start for the Scots. Just to get on the board early always calms those nerves, doesn't it? Yeah, always nice to get the first end under your belt. Julie puts her first down. Comes around nicely. Good home. Yeah, another good start from Julie. Alison now with right of reply. That will drift behind. So that one in front now. Yeah, two very good lines from Julie. Not far away, just took a little bit too much off, yeah. but still in the area. Ali needing to run this out, 
Ian likes it. He's calling it. Nicely played. So Julie just asking Michael to stand for Jack High. So pretty common thing players do when he can't see the Jack fully from the map. Just to give you an indication. Certainly helps. We see that a lot in uh, in pairs, triples and fours play. What's Julie got? Oh. Is it to just keep running? Great reply. Certainly gives something useful there for Michael to work off. Certainly does. Ian just giving Ali an indication as to where that jack is. Ali urging that one up. Well, it forces Michael onto the backhand. It does, and just a bit of a confidence booster for Alison Marion. Forrest won the opening stanza or opening battle between the two. She's got herself in a good position there. Michael Stepney fires his first one down. Now, Alan, bronze medalists for the losers of the semifinals in each event. No uh, no bronze medal playoff. So the loser of each of these mixed pair semifinals will walk away with a medal. Very good. And that's always a thing, I think, when you come to an international event. You obviously come for gold. But with a um, field of such calibre, you know, if you can come back with something to show for it, then... Um, that's always the aim. Exactly right. So just pause there with um, Ian being on the map, but there's also a shot played on the other rink. There was uh, quite a bit of noise from the English contingent. Yep. Kirsty Hembro was quite happy with what Martin Puckett put down. Can't quite see a score. Michael Stepney aims to get his in the count. And I tell you what, I tell you what, that's it's a, good. That's a great shot. Magnificently done by the Scotsman. It's the reason why he won this singles event last year in Bristol. First time it was ever held. In, uh, in the UK. Back at Warilla this year for the first time since 2019. Pre-COVID, before we didn't realise or didn't know what COVID was. It's a simpler time. It certainly was a simpler time where you could go anywhere in the world at any point. Mm -hmm. We can now, again, but... A Thank little goodness. bit more difficult. <laughs> Playing rides with masks on were fairly brutal. Yeah, did a few of them back over mm. to um, the UK for both the Commonwealth Games and the multinations prior to that. Oh, yes, that's true. You went over in May and then July. I did indeed. Plus the flight to move here. Have had to worn have worn a mask as well. Yes, brutal. Michael Stepney back on the mat. He's got one. It's very difficult to make it a second here. He's given it a go. If he's round those front ones, just isn't. Weight was excellent again. He's looking good tonight. He's a he's a good player. He's well. He's better than good. He's uh, you know he's definitely one of um, the world's best players, particularly on carpet. He goes very very well. Lovely guy too. And he's uh, fought his way into the top sixteen for the World Bowls Tour. Um, so he's now a regular on that circuit, and that will only 
going to continue to grow and enhance his game. Yeah, it certainly will. And he'll feature, of course, to def to aim to defend his title in the uh, in the men's singles semi final. Actually, defeated Ian Marion two sets to love or two sets to zero. I was going in tennis terms there. They score their second to the Scots. 2-0 leaders after two. The only male to defend or only males to defend their titles at this tournament. Leif Selby in 2009 and 10. And Jeremy Henry. Achieved the three-peat on two occasions in 12, 13 and 14. Ian McLean won in 2015. And then Jeremy Henry again in 16 to 18. Yeah, Jeremy's certainly got a phenomenal record alongside Joe Edwards in the women's. Yep. Joe Edwards, the only female to defend her title at this tournament. But Julie Forrest is a chance to do it. She takes on Malaysia's Nurul Aliani Jamil in the semi final. Next up. Great start there from Ali. She'll be pleased with that one. Must give them an abundance of confidence the fact that they've won the singles one year, and they come back. Semis in the singles the next year, but not only that, they're in the semis in the mixed pairs as well. Yeah, I think like everyone, the more time you get on the carpet, the more you learn about the rinks, the more comfortable you become. So it looks as though Guernsey holds sway at the moment. Allison's had a really good start to this game. They've both been really evenly poised. And Julie can't quite get in. One to Guernsey, but skips obviously still to come. Yeah, Julie had good weight there, just under slightly on the line. And I'm sure her family will be tuning in from Scotland, as will Michael's. Another good bowl there from Ali. Just sat down, so it just enables Michael just to see a little bit of the jack there. I'd imagine he'll look to try and change the shape of this head with his first bowl and give him a chance with the next two. And that's the difference in this format with three bowl pairs. You can afford to... Changing up with your first two bowl pairs, a lot more brutal. Yeah, it certainly is. Two bowl pairs, I can imagine, would be very difficult to play because you only get one chance at correction. Yeah, and it tends to be a more draw and fire game rather than um, a little bit in between. Wait here. From Stepney. Goes around and that's going all the way to the ditch. And Marion try and congest things up, do you think? I think he'll just be looking to put another one in there, just but not fill the holes. So, just instructions given to Julie Forrest. Come 
Uncle Stepney. They've cleared a couple. One to Guernsey still with Ian Marion having two to play. Yeah, he's certainly given Michael an option here. Got the back bowl. Only one down in the head a couple of seconds. Ian's looking here, though. And he promotes Allison's, and it comes straight back down. <laughs> Sat on the bias briefly. Just wasn't enough weight. Yeah, Michael looking at playing the split here. Even if he gets the bowl onto the jack, they've got the back bowl. If it goes out, Ian will draw it with his last, but he's only dropping a one. Gone for it, and I think he's come up with a fortunate result here. As Michael Stepney. Well, that was always an option yep. for him. He, you know, he was in the area. Brilliantly done. So, one to Scotland as it stands, with one to come for Ian Merrion. Now, is there a line here to possibly get rid of that Michael Stepney bowl and sit him for a couple? I think he'll just look to draw this. Look yeah, draw. on the backhand. Yep. Ali standing jack high. Watching it. <laughs> needs it to turn, needs it to turn. And Michael's clapping it, which indicates that he's good enough. It's got in, so that'll be one to Guernsey. And they are on the board, so 2-1 after 3 in favour of Scotland in this Battle of the Northern Hemisphere. Really good start to this one. Only singles conceded. That's uh, often the way. Both sides playing safe. Guernsey stretching out here. Ian clapping this one in from Ali. He yep. likes it, and so he should. Right on the jack. What a great start. She's had a magnificent start to this contest. Has been on the money pretty much from the get-go, as has Julie Forrest. Julie hopped in to play the forehand back down. Rink six side of the green, whereas Ali going with a slightly wider side. Another bowl in the head from Ali. So yeah, Jem, we've just put in a word, so fingers crossed where uh where it will be sorted very soon. Now Jason Crockett, the other semi final is being 
contested by Australia and England. So that's Kelsey Cottrell and Aaron Sheriff against Martin Puckett and Kirsty Hembro. Will she get down? Just missed it, but in a good receiver position. Julie will just be looking to back up her second ball. To slip through into a good area like Michael's directing there. She'll count and she'll cover. Double whammy. So, what has Julie got? Gone through the back. That's pretty much perfect. Yeah. Michael called her for that, and um, it gives them a couple of options in that head now. I always find it fascinating in pairs just to watch the dynamics between the lead and the skip, mm. the instructions, and whether there's any banter or not. Yeah, with some you see really good relationships and of course I think I'll have to wait for Ian to send this one down. But yeah, you see you know, Christina Christie and Alan Ryan and what they produce as a pairs team as opposed to some others who are just very blunt and very quick and succinct directions. Ian Marion. Good effort there from Ian. Very good effort. And I think when you play with each other a lot, obviously as Ali and Ian do, you know you know each other's game so well, you often don't have to say too much. And considering they do know each other so well, they'd be able to read the body signs and you can just point and things should be pretty on the money now. Like when, when you... Yeah, you know, when you've been playing together for so many years. Michael and uh, Michael and Julie with a bit of good banter out there. Yep, it's funny that we said that, and then it mm. followed. Maybe they were here. Maybe they heard us. <laughs> Good bowl there from Ian, asking questions of Michael. Now, what's he got in response? So it looks like he's on a good track if he can get all the way back. This is all about weight on this hand. Can he bend? Bend to the bowl. Good effort. Another one in the head, as Julie said, it helps. Jason asking uh, if I actually play bowls, asking for a friend. Well, not regularly. I do play occasionally. We have our little office competition, but those greens are very, very, very slow. I'm a slow green bully. <laughs> I think you're being pretty modest there, Val. I've, I've seen you go every now and again. I, I think, you know, oh, you've got potential. There's potential, but it's currently not good. But you've got the fight and the spirit. That's yeah, what I like. That's, that's true. I'm very, very competitive. I hate losing, so it would come out. <laughs> so Ian Marion. He likes it. He's running yep. after this one. It's just going to drift under. One to Guernsey still. Probably just fractionally short on the pace that he was looking for there. Chance for Michael. Last bowl. So, are they going to be tied or will Scotland retain their buffer? We're going to be tied. He we doesn't are. like that. 
And he said to me, I spoke to him in the break, he said, if I put a bad one down, Els, it's because I'm getting tired. Well, he's been bowling all day, so... He has, but he, uh, he'll he be right. <laughs> Have a coffee and all will be well. So, two apiece as we pass the halfway point of the opening set. Chloe Morrison dropping in a couple of sledges for me as well. Again, Guernsey sticking with this longer length. Adam Martin will bring you the England-Australia score very, very shortly. Alison <laughs> Marion. Yeah, Nicely good, played. Good start for Manny. Useful bowl. Can't quite see that on the screen there, but she's just finished two feet behind. Right behind the jack. So good start. And she's really, she's playing so well in this lead battle. She's setting up the head so nicely for, for Ian. And, well, Australia after five ends, Aaron Sheriff and Kelsey Cottrell lead 8-1 over Martin Puckett and Kirsty Hembro as that... First bowl from Julie drifts past Allison, so advantage Guernsey after one. Ali just pulling up with that last bowl. Good line again. Julie, interest in switching to the forehand in this direction. Big thing about this hand valley is you know you can put it out and it's going to come back. Yeah. It's what's been happening all day and feeling each other out, these two at the moment. Still one to Guernsey. Allison running in after this one. She's got to hurry. And won't get there, so it'll remain at one. Julie electing to stay on the same side sensible thing to do because there is a, a slight weight difference. Michael likes what they would call the road. All sorts of things in this bowls terminology, isn't it? Yeah. The road, the green, and she's bowled an absolute worldie there. Yeah. There's a reason she's had so much success at international level, Julie Forrest, and that is why. Ali and Ian just having a chat about this head. Yep. Yeah, there are there is a lot of terminology in bowls, and you notice that through all the different nations that you see play, and all the bowlers you see from different nations. That there's so many different terms and words, and I still haven't got my head around a lot of them. There are definitely numerous, and mm. um, the first time I went and played at Newcastle. So even in the same country, there's different um, expressions. I was playing um, with a lovely Geordie lady called Lynn, and she kept saying, how are you? How are you? And I, kept, I went home to uh, my flatmate, who was a Geordie, and said, I don't understand why she's telling my bowl to go away. And apparently, how are you means come on. So oh, there you go. Like hooray, but with a W. Yeah, how are you? Or hurry with a W. But yeah, there's all sorts of terminology. Mm. Front toucher. Yep. So Ian's given himself a, a good sighter with that first bowl. Another bowl in the head. Oh, 
Yeah, the uh, the Geordie vocabulary is very interesting. I've seen a couple of episodes of Geordie Shaw begrudgingly. Well, I've never watched that, but I very don't. much enjoyed my time in Newcastle. <laughs> Lovely people yep. and a beautiful part of England. Yeah, I'd love to explore a little bit more of England. Did London last year and it was sensational. So much more to see. It's Ian fires one into the head. Still one to Scotland here after that Julie Forrest worldie. Michael just on the wide side here. Indicated yeah. by Julie Waits, perfect. And it is, it sits jack high, but just a fair way off. Yeah, it's interesting here. Obviously, it's seven ends. So if Guernsey continues to keep the one, then they go at one ump into the last end, but Scotland have got last bowl. set sitting on a knife's edge we've only seen singles across the four ends so far it's been a real battle and nobody has had any sort of ascendancy Great indoor facility here at Warilla. Also got some outdoor greens as well. Yeah, beautiful grass greens. Some famous names of bowls wherever you go around here. You walk around one corner, there's Aaron Tees, another Gary Kelly, another Jeremy Henry, Corey Wedlock. shot miss there from Ian so it'll be one to Scotland it's a matter of question whether they can get a second wanting to get there has it done so Julie says could be it's um Pam Hocking is there, poised. Uh, Ali's going to measure herself. So definitely one, but whether this will be a second, we're not quite sure. Just the one. One to Scotland, 3-2. Going into the... Next end. Two ends to play. Three, two. Low scoring affair, but it's been uh, it's been tantalising so far because every end has been close. Yeah, nobody's given much away, are they? No. Certainly not. Really enjoying this contest. Julie Forrest puts down the opener for this sixth end, the penultimate end of the opening set. So two sets of seven ends and a one-end tiebreak to decide it if we're locked at one set apiece. Or zero sets apiece. It could so be half and half. Yep. Australians have taken the opening set in the other semi-finals. They lead England 1-0. to zero. One foot in tomorrow's decider. And of course, 
Aaron will be playing after that match in his single semi-final. He will be. That will also be against Martin Puckett of England. Well, they'll be getting a good look at each other in this game. They will be, and the same as what Michael Stepney and Ian Marion had. They played their singles quarterfinal against each other in the last session. That's an epic contest there. A couple of final bowl thrillers. Alison Marion puts in a nice second. So what has that one done? If it's limited the count maybe to one, that's what Ian's saying. On the backhand now, Alison. She's close. She's very close. Oh, what a great end. Oh, she's just unlucky here. I think it's Ward's well, rolled in for shot. So one to Guernsey, but that could have been so much more. She was bang on the money, but I think a little bit too bang on the money, if you ask me. Yeah, she was indeed. Good bowl. So Michael Stepney steps onto the mat. And goes around. Good home. Yeah, he played a good way. He was looking just to lift Julie's into the head, but he's also given him back position. Ali just calling in there just to rest off that bowl. If he gets inside of it, he should add another one. I say it, will we see another single <laughs> scored in this end? That is very possible. So Ian just putting in a covering bowl there. Now this is going to be interesting. Yeah. What does he do? How brave are you feeling, Michael mm -hmm. Stepney? I don't think he can afford to play it, to be honest. Well, you don't want to give up too much because there's only one end to go. They're only down one. Could end up as two. Yeah, his issue is if he gets the outside of his bowls, he's just pointing there and the jack goes to the side, he loses a multiple. And, of course, he's got to consider that Ian's got another bowl to come. Exactly. So even if he gets it out of Rinkin on the re-spot, he's still likely to drop the end. So he's got to weigh up his options. I personally think he won't play anything big. He'll just try to just arrive in the head and play the perfect bowl. But we will see. Oh, we're seeing right now, what has he done? He's just trying to arrive in the head here. Will he get down? He likes it. Will he get down? 
good effort. Oh, that is mightily close for Michael Stepney. The important thing here for Scotland is that he hasn't made it any easier for Guernsey to get to. No, certainly not. So Ian just up the other end surveying his options and consulting with his wife about what the go is. Jeez, that was a good effort from Michael Stepney. It was, and I clearly can't count because there's another another end to come, isn't there? There is one this. more. One more to come. So, sitting precariously, but you still don't want to concede a multiple if you're Scotland because you know, you'd rather be even than down. Oh, you would, and the thing is, if it stays as it is, then Michael's got last bowl. Exactly. Ian Marion. He's gone on the backhand. Not sure. This is going to achieve a result here. So that'll just be one to Guernsey and we're tied. It's three apiece after six. So we continue the trend of singles. It's gone two to Scotland, two to Guernsey, one to Scotland, one to Guernsey and... We get a one-end shootout for the opening stanza of this semi-final. Of course, the Australians won the opening set against uh, against England, so they have one foot in the decider already. Last bowl, very important now, I think, for uh, for Michael Stepney. Jack isn't quite as long in this direction this time. Who can get the advantage? The lead battle has been fascinating and generally it's been the times that the lead has set up the end, that nation has actually won it. Yep, and uh, we've just done the classic commentator's curse. 100%. <laughs> Still got two to come, Alison. <laughs> but no, you're right. It's Julie's followed her. She has. Oh, maybe we have. <laughs> <laughs> I think it often happens. You, Always you try and be too too neat as well. You know, you want to nail the jack. Yeah. You know, whereas it's important if you're going to miss, miss in the good areas. These two know that they're world class bowlers. They've been around long enough. They'll both be disappointed with uh, the opening bowls, but they'll be looking to rectify it. And Ali has done that with her second bowl. That's a brilliant adjustment from Ali. Scotland's World Bowls Championship team for later this year hasn't been named as of yet but I ex expect to see some familiar names there and Alex Marshall Paul Foster Darren Burnett I would be uh, surprised if they weren't there but you never know in bowls yep. Ian McLean was the singles player at the Com Games last year also has won this event They've certainly got a lot of strength and depth. Mm, they do. Stuart Anderson, of course. And they've got Next. some very handy Scots living in Australia as well. Ryan Burnett, Kevin Anderson. Yeah, both uh, got great jobs within the bowls industry. They do. Ryan at Club Pine Rivers and Kevin at Moama. Oh, this is a really great bowl oh. from Julie. What a bowl to finish on the first set. And there you go. That's Well, the trend has been the lead who has won the battle. 
ended up winning the end, or that nation has ended up winning the end. So let's see if that continues to stay on track. And I'm interested now to see if Julie asks for Jack Kai every time because uh, Michael just joked, just asked me to stand Jack Kai all the time <laughs> <laughs> if she bowls a, a toucher. Yeah, the relationship between the two is um, is good. It's all kind-hearted and the banter is good as you alluded to a few of those dynamics before, Alan. Yeah, and it's really important, that compatibility. Ian got a little ricochet and it just doesn't go enough. And to this end, it's been Julie Forrest. She's played a couple of absolute bombs. Yeah, so they're, they're looking to play the same shot as Guernsey here. And it's fine as long as Michael gets down. What he doesn't want to do is leave anything Jack High for Ian to use. It's gone around and he'll just nudge in in front of Alison Marion's. Yeah, it's a good bowl there. Ali calling for Ian to play the same shot. After two ends in the second set, Australia and England locked at one apiece. Australia took the first. All the Aussies have to do is draw in that second set and they're into the final. Ali looks interested. What a bowl from Ian Merrion. And you could hear him say, just the wood, just the wood. All he needed was the bowl and... Brilliantly done. It's resting right on the jack now. It's a great bowl. Michael's going to have to time this perfectly just to get down to spring it. That really was magnificent. That's such a difficult shot to play because you need just to have that care and that the, the right weight. Can he get down? Good effort. Australia's just picked up two, so they lead 3-1 after three in the second set against England. Ian Merrion has just made things so much more difficult for Scotland. Michael Stepney has the final bowl. Ian has one to make it really difficult for him. Yeah, and they're looking at blocking the line. Yeah. <coughs> That's exactly what they're doing. Their feet are just positioned at the the spot where they want to have that blocking bowl. What a sensational delivery that was. Look at where that bowl is sitting, Alan. Oh, it's a perfect bowl. Absolutely perfectly played. He didn't want much jack movement at all, and he timed it perfectly. This has been a magnificent set of bowls. It would be fitting if it was decided by that bomb from Ian Merrion. Now, what has he done with this blocker? Alison wants it to get around, wants it to get around, and has that left the door open? Well, Michael's still got a chance, but it a difficult shot he's got to play it absolutely perfectly so as it sits two to Guernsey Michael Stepney with one bowl claim the set doesn't look overly sure of it he's walking wants it to hold is he going to get down? Has he got it? Oh, He's what got a it. Shot. Michael Stepney, take a bow. That is magnificent. Scotland take the opening set 4 3. What a bowl. He it had to be perfect, and he was. That's exactly what you alluded to, Alan Faulkner. And my word, that was beautiful. Michael Stepney. Give Scotland that one set advantage that they so desperately wanted. Amazing.
So a full set of ones. It's very rare that you see that. I think it just goes goes to show the the nip and tuck nature and mm. how evenly matched these pairs are. Now, as I've said in the other games, these first three ends of the second set are key. So if you win the first set, you want to consolidate and build on that. If you lose it, you need to fight and stamp your authority on the game. Vital. And the comments are pouring in for Mike Stepney. Just appreciative of what he was able to produce because it cannot be understated how difficult that bowl, I that bowl was to come up with. He had millimetres to work with and he utilised all of them as Alison just wants it to get around a little bit more. Won't be enough. The Scottish fans are absolutely loving this. Seeing their countrymen get this job done. And Julia, Michael, they'll be well, well known to um, everyone in Scotland. They're two well-known individuals, great personalities. So there'll be uh, the whole of Scotland behind them, I'm sure. So Daniel, just started watching. Uh, any updates on the other game? Well, I can give you that. Australia in Aaron Sheriff and Kelsey Cottrell took the opening set over England's Kirsty Hembro and Martin Puckett. They lead 3-1 after three in the second. And Alan, you have to head off very quickly. So um, thank you for your efforts today. And we'll catch you tomorrow morning, bright and early, and looking forward to some finals action. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And, yeah, very much look forward to coming back tomorrow. Um, so yes, really sorry I can't stay for this second set and decider of who goes through. Um, but I will be checking in later to see what happens on both this game and the other one. Certainly. Well, have a good night, Alan. Thank you for your efforts today. All right, so that first set was so brilliant. Almost had to take a breather. The skips come down, so advantage Marion. All four of these bowlers have just been magnificent and just getting better and better, feeling each other out in epic circumstances. Great to have everybody's company who's watching tonight. You're watching an exquisite matchup. Love to know where you're watching from, how many Scots are watching tonight. I've seen all the flags come out. Australia now lead 4-1 in the second set against the English. What has Ian Marion got? Must have been a body blow. For Guernsey to have lost that Opening set, but they've bowled so well and so consistently. It's one of the better bowls you'll see from Michael Stepney and what he was able to produce in that opening Set, he runs behind this one. What's he got? He's just nudged Allison's bowl onto the jack and solidifies shot. Scott watching from Rhodes. That's Derek McNichol. Susan McNeil watching from New Zealand. Got David Baker watching from the Gold Coast, where the Australian Open will be at the start of next month. June 10, that kicks off on the Gold Coast. Got 
Lorna watching from Scotland. So, Stuart as well. Leonora, South Africa. Great to have everybody's company. It's a world event and we're seeing some world-class bowls as all four of our combatants stand at the head, surveying it, giving the skips instructions on what to do. All for a place in tomorrow's decider. Australia leading at 4-1 after four in the second set, having won the first on the other rink. Michael Stepney. On the forehand, wants it to get around. He doesn't look too pleased with it. So Ian Merrion will try and convert the uh, first multiple of the night. First seven ends of the match, the entirety of the opening set, all singles. So will we see the first two or even more than that? Opportunity on the forehand. And that's where Alison is placing her foot. He's gone with the forehand. He's running in behind it. We know the quality that he's produced already tonight. Wants it to get around. Will it go far enough? No. And the run of singles continues. But what Alan Faulkner was alluding to before, those first three ends of the next set after you lose one are so important, even if you win one, because you can get the ascendancy. And Guernsey have rebounded nicely, and that lead battle has become even more enthralling because Alison Marion showing exactly why she's got an MBE. Matt right back. Jack's sort of half to three-quarter length. So Paul watching from Somerset in the UK. You can't watch the other ink. This is the only one as Alice and Mary and plays a beauty. We'll continue to give you updates of that Australia-England contest on the other rink. Australia currently leading 4-1 in the second set after four ends. That'll change very soon as Martin Puckett has a chance to strike back for England. Know that all four of these bowlers are very, very handy on the indoor arena up in the UK. Three of the four of them actually won a title at this event last year in Bristol. First time it's ever been held in the UK. Hong Kong, Warilla and Bristol have all held this tournament. Warilla, the spiritual home. All but two events have been Held here. Australia now leading 5-1 after 5 in the second set. Just edging their way closer to a spot in the decider.
Some big names of bowls watching around. Karen Murphy, of course, here. Coaching the Australian team. Kay Moran hanging around as well. Saw Dawn Heyman walking around earlier today. Jackaroo playing in the World Championships. Ian knocks Allison's up, but dare say that is shot still to Julie. Not too sure at either angle I have. I think it might actually be to Guernsey. Banter between the two. Very, very funny. That's not going to get there. At this stage, it still looks like we might be just working with singles unless something drastic happens. So. Been a great day of bowls. John, hopefully we can, but not 100% sure. Ian Marion, his penultimate bowl. Has he got the goods? Has he got the goods? He does. <laughs> Two to Scotland, or to Guernsey, I should say. Pretty happy with himself there, and he should be. Now, right of reply to Michael Stepney. This is the end where he played his bomb to secure the first set. What's he got in reply to Ian Marion's? The line was great. The weight was a tad short. One to come for each. This one has been a high quality contest. And Marion will try and solidify some great work that he's put together in this second end of set number two. Goes with the backhand, so he's swapping around. Wants it to get around the outside. Has he got enough on it? No. No. So opportunity for Michael to try and cancel out this two for Guernsey. And level things up in his second set or put Scotland in front. Possible option for a trail on the forehand. Maybe to get two. He's looking from afar, but I don't think this is going to have enough. It's going to come underneath. He apologises to Julie, and they're going to have a quick look, but we're pretty sure that's going to be 3 nay. That bowl did get knocked up and was in the count, so the first multiple of the night goes to Guernsey. And the round of applause you can hear in the background is Australia defeating England, so... Things happening all around this green, but Australia are into the final. Aaron Sheriff and Kelsey Cottrell, the winner of this, to play them. And Guernsey have done some pretty good work to get into this second set. They score the first multiple eight, or eight ends in. And they lead it 4-0 after two in the second set.
So, Kelsey Cottrell and Aaron Sheriff await the winner of this contest. And Ian Marion has said advantage Guernsey in set two. The lead at 4-0, only one multiple scored. And that was in the previous end where Guernsey notched up a three. Really looking forward to the concluding stages of this one because it's been hotly contested, fiercely fought. And you can see why three of the four of these bowlers won titles at this very event last year. And Ian Merrion, a fine bowler in his own right as well. Look at this. This is just, it's magnificent. Two to Scotland. Alice and Mary and Trots in behind this. Gets it around the back. And it stays up. So if there is an attack, it'll come into play. David Baker certainly enjoying himself watching this. And Jamie Dickinson, great leading or brilliant leading, and it certainly is. These two have been on song all night. Susan Carter saying phenomenal, and it certainly is. Would be my word of choice, I think, Susan. Look at this. This is just... Look at that head. Two to Scotland at the moment. A multiple for them would be ideal to get themselves back into this set. They trail 4-0 and after winning the opener, 4-3. So only singles, as I said, conceded or scored in that opening set. Guernsey with a three in the last to... Gain some ascendancy. David Baker, I think yeah, I think he's going to burst with excitement here. He's loving life. And I see why. It's only going to get better too, don't you worry. Ian coming on the forehand. Solid weight. Allison wants it to hold. Just comes underneath. Stepney on the backhand. Now, I reckon he's covering here because there could be an attack from Ian. Just 
it's wide and a bit short. Ian back on the forehand, similar to his last, and he runs in after this one. He likes it more so. This one comes around the back. So they've got one in a good home, and they also have the back bowl in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen there. That's where Alison Merrion put one. So what has Michael Stepney got in reply? This one's going to come underneath. So both of them have one left. Ian will have to disrupt things here, I, I dare say. They're down two. And after scoring three, the last thing they want is to concede a multiple when they've only conceded singles throughout the entirety of this contest. More solid weight. And that goes around the back. So let's see what Michael Stepney does. They hear on the side of caution. Or does he go for more? Michael Stepney. For a third, possibly, to trim the gap to one. It's going, but it on the side of caution. And it'll be two to Scotland. So they score their first multiple of the night and trim the gap back to two. So 4-2 after three in this second set in favour of Guernsey. And again, the sensational leading from these two has been magnificent. It has been the difference, I guess, in a lot of these ends where Alison and Julie have both been on song this whole night. And it's been so good to watch. Winner of this, of course, to play in a final. Loser gets a bronze, so England already with a bronze medal from this contest. And Julie Forrest right behind the jack. What a home that is. Brilliantly done by Alison as well. This lead battle just continues to get better and better. Another good home. Michael indicating one to Scotland. Can Alison change that at all?
to the forest. On the forehand, has come around. It's travelling, knocks Allison's previous bulb. So it's her job done in this fourth end of set number two. Of course, the first sample of World Bowls events in 2023. We've got the World Bowls Championships coming up later on this year on the Gold Coast. Wonder Guernsey indicated. So I think Michael saw him point one up, but Marcus is one to Guernsey. World Bowls Championships, of course, on the Gold Coast, August, September. Looking forward to that. And also the World Champion of Champions as well. Good to see the world champion of champions back last year. It's a, a COVID hiatus. Saw Taylor Bruce of New Zealand defeat Carla Krasanik of Australia in the final there at Nine-Eye. As that bowl of Michael Stepney ricochets onto Allison's, which ricochets again in turn onto Julie's. And it may have disrupted who has shot, and it certainly has. Marker indicates that it's one to Scotland now. And back to the champion of, champion of champions. What a wonderful men's singles final it was as well as Sam Tolshard defeated Izatzel Keplet with a sensational final bowl of that tiebreak. If you go back and, and watch that, I would certainly suggest that you do. The final two bowls of that contest were epic. And Christine, yep, you are right. The Australian Open in June, that's not a World Bowls event. It's certainly one that we are excited for. A festival of bowls on the Gold Coast over two weeks, June 10 to 23. If you're in Australia, get up there. Be spending a lot of time on the Gold Coast this year. Kenneth saying, well done, Kirsty and Martin. Yep, that is exactly right from Ilminster, BC, Bowls Club. They've done a wonderful job. Martin still in singles contention. He'll be up against Aaron Sheriff in the next session. Martin and Kirsty will get a bronze medal as Ian Marion. Comes around and won't get there. Currently one to Scotland. Both Ian and Michael have one to come. Michael walking backwards down the green as he looks to get to the mat. So next we will be covering the match that I was just talking about. Aaron Sheriff and Martin Puckett. That'll be your broadcast game next. So... Get the popcorn ready. Make sure your phone is on Do Not Disturb. Unfortunately, David, I don't think you are going to get Clive back. Sorry to disappoint a lot of uh, a lot of viewers, but um, no, Clive is. Accepted a role at Bowls WA, so may see him sporadically across events, but certainly not as much as we did. That, of course, being Clive Adams, very, very accomplished bowler and commentator.
Ian Marion now. Trots in. Allison likes it too. What have we got? Ian Marion squeezes it in and has done so beautifully. That is a great shot, and he secures another multiple. Two shots, six to the lead. Instant reply from Guernsey. So four ends gone in this second set as we look, or Guernsey look, to go to a tie break. So, Jamie, we're not 100% sure of what time the singles will be, but I am assuming they'll want to get out here pretty quickly. Could be after a while the next match because Stepney or Michael and Julie will need a bit of a break. Michael definitely will and Martin and Omar. So the battle of the leads continues. As Julie clips the ball on the way through. So, and that was her own ball. So advantage Marion. One to come for both. As this is seemingly, possibly, heading closer to a tie break. 6-2 buffer at the hands of Guernsey. Allison puts that in. That'll be a second, I believe. What has Julie got in reply? It's gone through, but not a bad home. So things are left wide open for both the skips here to work their magic as they have worked so effort effortlessly this evening. One to Guernsey at the moment. 6-2 they lead. Lost the first set. Scotland will be looking to try and get a multiple back and... All they need to do is tie this second set, considering they won the first. They don't need to win it. And that'll be enough to secure their passage into the final. Here's Ian Marion. John Walker in his company as Ian just falls around the back. What does Michael do here? He 
Thinking backhand. That's what we've gone with. Wants it to hold, but I dare say this might be coming underneath and that's exactly where it's going. Right idea though. Ian will come on the forehand and try and set things up a little more for Guernsey. Wanted to get through and it has done so. That is brilliant. That's a very good home and he's hurt a lot of the ideas for Scotland. Solid weight here from Michael Stepney. We'll want to clear a lot of these out. He's going to get a couple. He gets one, almost knocks Ian's away. One out. That Ian Marion Bolt. Stays in its place. So, a one here, and it makes things very precarious for Scotland. A two here makes it very dangerous. They would want to avoid a tie break at all costs because on a one end shootout, anything can happen. Everything is re spotted, so no killed ends. Everyone's surveying what the options are. It's been a great contest and it is fitting of a tie break. It would be fitting of a tie break, that is. Ian Marion makes his way back to the mat. Gone with a forehand, and they've shown steely resolve here, Guernsey. They just, both the husband-wife combination of Allison and Ian have rebounded from what would have been a body blow at the end of the first set with a bomb played by Michael Stepney. Only had millimetres to work with, and it was a truly sensational delivery. Ended up winning the set 4-3 for Scotland. But it's a race out to a 6-2 lead. And if all things go well for them, possibly 7-2. And I'm sure Michael Stepney will have something to say. Controlled weight from Michael Stepney. He likes it. So does Julie. He's just come underneath the jack. By the barest of margins, and he can't quite believe it, neither can Julie Forrest. We're going to measure for a second, but it'll be the end secured by Guernsey. Oh, it was mightily close. <laughs> Michael looks over and says, not close enough. Settling. <laughs> That's one, one to Guernsey, seven, two after five. We edge ever closer to a tie break. This one being played in great spirit as well. Both the skips having a little conversation and a joke with each other. So a two here for Guernsey. 
is enough to send this one to a tie break. One here ensures that Scotland need a full count to not go to a tie break. And a collect here for Scotland. Keeps their hopes of a straight sets victory alive. Alison Marion finding a nice home. Really enjoyed this contest and I hope everybody at home has too. We're watching at the dinner table or hopefully not being too antisocial at a restaurant or something like that, but it's been a cracker of a night and look at that from Julie Forrest. The lead battle has been enthralling. Trevina Lewis watching from Wales around breakfast time there or early in the morning, around 11 a.m., I think. Around eight hours behind in Wales. The Welsh still featuring prominently 10.03 a.m. So the UK nine hours behind Australia, the rest of Europe around eight for most of Europe. Kirsten, no, it won't be Andrew Kelly's semi-final. It'll be Aaron Sheriff against Martin Puckett. That'll be the streamed final or semi-final. That's coming up after this. It will be Michael Stepney against Andrew Kelly. And then in the women's side of things, be Julie Forrest against Malaysia's Nurul Aliani Jamil and Caitlin Inch against Amy Williams of Wales. And we will keep you up to date with all those scores when the rinks are when all the rinks are in play. But back here, Julie Forrest, well having a nice little warm up. to see still a lot of fans here at the Warilla Bowls and Recreational Club watching along. If you are in the area, get down here. Julie Forrest, nicely played. Currently two to Scotland. But should it stay that way, it would need them or have them needing three with an end to play, but the two skips making their way up to change things drastically. Forehand. I reckon the trail will be the aim for Ian Marion. Allison likes it and just goes over the top. Michael Stepney, I dare say he'll try and get one with those two Marion bowls. And go around the front. What's Ian done? He likes it. He really likes it. Wants to obstruct. One out of the head. Two to Scotland, but no, three to Scotland. Marker changes the paddle indications, and that is three currently to Scotland, which on a live scoreboard would make it 7-5 with an end play. They only need to tie this set, Scotland, to avoid the dreaded tie break. 
actually wants it to run, it won't. Poised on a knife's edge, this contest. Seven PM local time. This battle has been fierce between both the leaders and the skips. Both said anything you can do, I can do better and just continued to outdo each other all night. It's been a wonderful, wonderful exhibition of bowls. Big weight here from Ian Merry, and he likes it. He skipped behind it. He's got it. And that'll be respotted on the tee. Good sportsmanship from Michael Stepney to clap that one in. but a lot of room for the Scott to work with. Sorry, Graham, I'm not 100% sure what bowls Julie's playing with. Michael Stepney. To keep the second set alive for Scotland. That will do nicely. That is one to the Scots. 7-3 in favour of Guernsey. Scotland need four to tie the set and win the match because they won the first. Guernsey just need to avoid a four or win the end themselves. And we're off to a one-set shootout or a one-end shootout. Last match that we saw was a one end shootout between Aaron Sheriff and Daniel Salmon. Sheriff trailing the jack with the final bowl of that tiebreak to emerge victorious and progress to the men's single semi final against Martin Puckett, which we will have for you after this. Final. And concluding end of this second set is underway and Julie Forrest turns her back on that one before it stops. Not overly pleased. Dropped well short. It's a leading battle. As I've said time and time again, has been brilliant. State of play is that Scotland need a four. To win this match in straight sets. If not, if they don't score a four or better, we are going to a tie break. Julie Forrest with a nice second. Secure shot. Will it be the defending singles champions or will it be one of the defending mixed pairs championships and the husband-wife combination of Guernsey? Allison has done beautifully to secure shot. What has Julie got? It's dropped under. Hurts a lot of the chances that Scotland have to score four. Of course, no killed ends. It's all respot. And Alison will want another one in just to ensure that the tie break is our destination here tonight. It looks ever so likely that that is going to be the case. 
bowls can be a tricky sport sometimes. One to Guernsey as the skips make their way down for the final time in set number two. It's been magnificent. Michael Stepney with his first of this final end. And what a bowl that is. One to Scotland. The shots don't matter as they do in the group stage. All Ian needs to do is come up with the scenario where Scotland don't get four. Oh, and he's done that well. I could have lost it. Even come up with a prediction for who's going to win this. As Michael Stepney fires down yet another. How is this? How is this? It's squirt of the jack straight to Ian Marion's back bowl. So you can see it. The furthest bowl back there behind Allison's leg. Or right there on the 45 while on lock. Thank you. That's the state of play. That purple bowl is Ian Marion's. It's looking and more impossible that a tiebreak will be, be avoided as Ian Marion prepares to fire down his second one just in consultation with his wife. Robert asking what time Amy Williams will be playing her semi-final. It'll be very, very soon. It'll be after the conclusion of this one. Now, the players will need a suitable break because Michael and Julie will both be playing single semifinals in the next session. So I'll need some time to recover and regroup before that. Scheduled for 8.30 local time. It'll be earlier than that. And then tomorrow morning, the three finals. That's when it all starts. 10 a.m. mixed pairs. Aaron Sheriff and Kelsey Cottrell. They're already through. The Australian duo, they defeated Martin Puckett and Kirsty Hembro of England in the semis. So the English pair will walk off with a bronze. That'll be at 10 a.m. They'll face the winner of this contest right here. This could be the final bowl of the second set. Here we go. Michael Stepney fires this one down. Looking at it, inspecting, won't get a result. That'll be it. It's one to Guernsey. They're not going to play the final bowl here because we are off to a one-end shootout. 8-3 second set in favour of Guernsey. We'll toss a coin and see who has the mat. So women's singles final scheduled at 1pm tomorrow after the 10am mixed pairs final. Could be brought earlier. Check your, check your local guides as well, your local times, local time zones. But it could be brought earlier. And then the men's singles at 3 p.m. scheduled at the moment. But I dare say after today, things will be brought up earlier. Guernsey, 
they have the mat first. This match, so fitting of a tiebreak. Dawn Heyman asking what happened with Kelsey and Omar. They are through to the final. They won in straight sets. Here we go. Matt back. This is the length that Alison Marion has been comfortable with. One set apiece. All down to this end to see who faces Australia in tomorrow's decider. And Alison Marion has put in a very, very nice starter. Christine, it'll all be right here on the World Bowls Facebook page. If anybody's told you otherwise, do not listen to them. This is the home of the 2023 World Bowls Indoor Championships. Not a bad home from Julie Forrest. Ten bowls to come. Allison wants it to hold. It's come underneath. One to Guernsey still. Julie Forrest with another one firing down. The defending singles champion. Knox Allison's closer to the jack, but the jack, if it does get knocked at all. It moves a fair distance. The surface is very smooth and very quick. So, Christine, this is also on Bowls Australia's YouTube, just with the issues that we've been having with Facebook today, but I'd be coming here as your first point of call tomorrow. What has Julie got? What has Julie got? Michael wants it to hold. It does hold, and that is one to Scotland as the changeover occurs. What a leading battle it's been between Alison and Julie. I've loved every second of this contest. Six bowls to decide who faces Aaron Sheriff and Kelsey Cottrell in tomorrow's decider. Men's singles coming up right after this between Aaron Sheriff and Martin Puckett on the streamed rink. Ian Marion. Comes underneath. And it's Michael Stepney's turn to make things more difficult for Guernsey to do something. It will, of course, have last bowl, which is exactly what you want. You need that right of reply.
This one's going to come around the back. So he's covering the tee. This is his indication to Julie, and he has covered it ever so well. Fat Jack is moved out of bounds at all. That Scottish bowl is going to be right on top of it. Forehand for Ian. He trots in behind. Allison tells it to hold. Sits the jack. Trails it forward. Or trails it back, I should say. And currently two. Advantage Guernsey yet again. But plenty of room for Michael Stepney to work with. Going to have another final bowl thriller. You can hear a pin drop. Everybody quiet. Waiting the results of this one. Michael Stepney wants it to come underneath. It won't do so. Still none the wiser about who is going to win this match. Two to Guernsey. Lost the opening set thanks to a Michael Stepney bomb. Came back and rebounded, regrouped, won the second 8-3. Now they hold sway with plenty of room for both skips to work with. They both have one to come and it will come down to the final bowl. Ian Marion. There's not much more he can do now. As his bowl comes down. They want it to hurry. It won't. It'll come up short. But I think this was almost the plan. Because it does cut the line off. What does Michael Stepney go to now? Could be an option to play some running weight through the gap. Try and bounce that jack towards the back of the rink where Scotland do control. But it's Michael Stepney, Julie Forrest, Alison Marion and Ian Marion stand at the back of the rink. All they can do is watch. As the final bowl of this contest comes down. Michael Stepney. On the forehand. He's inquisitive. He wants it to keep going. He wants it to keep going. He's touched the jack. Has he done it? He certainly has. Marker indicates one to Scotland. And it's Michael Stepney and Julie Forrest. They go through to tomorrow morning's final against Aaron Sheriff and Kelsey Cottrell. The Scots, they survive the husband-wife combination of Guernsey, Ian and Alison Marion. They played a hell of a match. What a wonderful exhibition of bowls that was. Sad that it had to end uh, like that in a tie break. You wanted to just keep going forever, but what a match it was. Michael Stepney and Julie Forrest, brilliantly done. We'll be back very, very soon for Aaron Sheriff and Martin Puckett in the men's singles semi final. Right after this on World Bowls Live, I've been Val Febo. Big thank you to Alan Faulkner for joining us as well. That was an absolute cracker of a match. Hoping for more of the same in the next session.